Jocko, how do you read books to prepare for podcasts? How do you read a book to extract maximum benefit? Any advice on keeping yourself focused and being patient while reading books? So this was a, a series of reoccurring questions that were about kind of how I read. Yeah. And I grabbed three of them that were in there. So how do I prepare for the podcast? It's actually a pretty in-depth situation. <laughs> so first thing I do is I read the book. As I'm reading the book, I highlight anything that I find to be interesting or informative to me or reinforce an idea that I know or bring a new idea to bear. So as I'm going through, I'm just highlighting everything. And when I get done with it, now, just to, just to say, when we're talking max benefit, when I was in college and I would do that, I would, once I got done with highlighting the areas that I found informative or important, then I would make flashcards of the highlighted areas. Mm -hmm. So I was like double locking yeah, the information. Because yeah. when you, as soon as I make a flashcard, I've already got it 50% in my memory. Yeah. Well, I read it, I highlighted it. It yeah. was like 25%. Mm -hmm. Make a flashcard, that's another. 45 or 50 percent and so boom now I got to do is study the flashcard for that last 25 percent to lock in the knowledge yeah. Where when I go in to take the test I know 100 percent I know I'm gonna know every answer on the, yeah. on, the yeah. on the question when you recall like test. a thing You actually recall what the flashcard yeah. looked like yes, you exactly. know how you wrote the a on yes. that one, you know Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's what I would do this kind of a sidetrack when I was in college highlight and then make flashcards of what I highlighted now for the podcast, what I do is once I once I read it and highlight it, now I go back through and I look at the highlights and now I start being selective of what is going to be in the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I actually circle the actual words I'm gonna read with a red pen that I'm holding right here. And, and, and that's what I do, I circle and then I have little notes that say next, like when I circle a section and then I'll either have an arrow that goes to another point or I'll have a little note that says go to page 49 mm -hmm. and then there'll be a tab one of those little yellow sticky tabs on page 49 boom There it is I can flip right there real quick So mm -hmm. we don't have to edit we don't have to there's a flow I can keep rolling and then on top of those When I get to when I read something and I want to say something about it I have little sticky notes that I put in there either sticky notes. I have the sticky tape stuff, which is pretty legit <laughs> <laughs> And I just roll I roll that out. I stick it on there and I say hey mention you know experience I had here or what happened when I was doing this and so I kind of make those notes and that way I can Get it done and while I'm doing that is when I have to figure out the chronology that I'm gonna read it because I don't always read the notes from the book on the podcast in the same order that They are in the book mm -hmm. because sometimes it just doesn't make sense Sometimes there's some so at the same time. I'm doing that. I'm going back and figuring out what Direction I'm actually gonna read them. Oh, right, right. So sometimes my conclusion of the book is Different than the author's conclusion gotcha. of the book. Yeah, so I got to go back and say I got to go back pages or forward or whatever So right. that's what I'm figuring out there as well So that's kind of what the podcast prep looks like now how to stay focused and patient while reading books This is really difficult. I don't have a long attention span when I have a long attention span, it's only because I absolutely force myself to do it. Hmm. So what I would prefer to do is to read in small chunks. I want to do work for like an hour at a time, right? When I'm writing, I want to work for about an hour. When I'm reading, I want to read for about an hour. After that, I want to get up and break something or throw something or lift something or run somewhere. You know what I mean? It's I have an hour of patience with me. Of course, unfortunately, that's not enough time. You know, especially when you're doing a podcast a week and you got to read a whole book. Well, guess what? You got to you got to read for longer. Mm -hmm. You got to read for two, three hours at a pop. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try and make it that I do an hour early in the morning. Sometimes when I'm behind the curve, I will read first thing in the morning before I work out because I just want to get an hour done. Then I get to go and release. Mm -hmm. Right? Then I get done with the workout, take a shower. Now I'm going to read for another 45 minutes. Okay, good. Now I'll do something else. A little pre-lunch reading. So, and then before I go to bed, I'm doing another hour. So there, I just got four or five hours in a day without having to sit down and do something for four or five straight hours, which yeah. bothers the hell out of me. The other thing you can do, and I do this, is I'll read multiple books at the same time, mm -hmm. which is which is an interesting task, a tactic. I don't know if everybody 
should do that or could do that or would want to do that but sometimes one book gets boring but I know I got to read so I just have two books three books all sitting there and I'm reading them all at the same time and that makes them a little bit more interesting Mm -hmm. and the last thing I would say about trying to be focused on and, and patient when you're reading books is to try to really understand what it is that is happening in the book not just from a plot perspective Mm. but from a human perspective what is that person going through what is that like for that person what are they thinking Mm. and I get to a point where I'm so engaged I feel like I'm becoming the author I feel like I'm in the book sometimes when I'm reading it so that is another good way to keep it engaging because if you're seeing it from the outside and you're not really in it well then it's not it's just not as engaging simply put if you get into it and you start thinking about that person you go back you know do a little wikipedia search on the author and see who they are that gives you like a little insight yeah yeah and that helps me now I connect with them I know that they're from New Jersey I know that they went to this college I know that they played soccer so now when I'm reading about them I'm going oh yeah that must oh you know so I try and get a little background on that person mm-hmm. gives me a little bit more engagement Dang. Dang that's it. that that's my it, reading habits it's kind of advanced that it, and it makes more sense I think that like how you say you want to put yourself in the guy's head you know yeah actively I'm gonna consciously put myself in the in the guy's head sometimes people are so good at writing where you that just happens naturally Mm -hmm. but when you do when you do that it's like you can kind of get you get the story of course but most of the time you when you do the all the time it's lessons learned like what do you learn Mm -hmm. it's almost like when you're in your head is in it like that all the lessons are just flying into your brain you know yeah because it's almost like you're doing like you're you're going through that war or that particular ambush or something like that. And then, you know, they talk about the mistakes and all that, but you feel the mistake. Yeah. Know? And also I have some experience with what they're talking about. Oh yeah. Cause so it's like, and, and so, and, and I'm not saying, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't have even close to the experience of the books that I'm reading on this podcast. These guys that were in, the battle of Iwo Jima and the battle of the bulge. No, nothing I did compared to anything that they do. But do I know what it's like to be waiting to go into a bad situation? Do I know what it's like to be shot at? Do I know what it's like to, you know, have guys getting wounded? Yeah, I know what that's like. So that's a little connection too. But I think, you know, everybody that's been in stressful situations of any kind, you can say, Oh, what, what must that feel like? Hey, I know what it's like when I was waiting to, you know go in for a job interview and I was completely stressed out and that's what this guy must be feeling right here only even worse so then you make that little me- mental connection a little mental yeah. leap and you can look like you said you can then learn more from it yeah yeah which and, is important yeah so if I'm going into this particular situation you know in a book I'm reading it and I'm not as engaged as maybe I could be this guy goes through XYZ experience I'm looking at it from my opinion, like, well, I could handle that, you know, kind of thing. But this guy's the type of guy who that's maybe part of his weakness or something like that and vice versa, where, you know, like, I don't know, something about claustrophobia. I might be like, dang, but that claustrophobia, part of it, part of the story isn't necessarily a huge part of the lesson that you're trying to get from it. You know, so you might miss there might be some disconnects there if you don't. Because they have a certain intention, yeah. and you have a certain intention. So if yours is the lesson lessons learned, you might miss some of those lessons. Just the feeling for of sure. missing. For know? sure, I'm not going to get everything out of a book. That's why when you that's why when you get a really good book, you read it multiple times, and you right. get more out of it every single time that you read it. No doubt about that one. Yeah, it's true. 